Hi guys, I'm about to come out with a series of videos on how to flight train your bird, but I thought that before I even do that, it's important for me to kind of go over the basics of and the fundamentals of training um, so that at least we're all on the same page before we start um, that series of videos. So I'm going to encourage you guys to watch through the entire video from start to finish. That way you can understand uh, the process of training and also what I think is the most powerful tool when you're training any kind of animal, whether or not it's a bird, a cat, or a dog. So the most powerful tool that a trainer has in their toolkit is a clicker. For those who don't know what it is, it might seem like a gimmick, but um, it's really effective and I'm going to show you guys why it's effective. A clicker does nothing but makes a click sound when you click on it. So it's not a really high-tech device it's, and that's all it does. Um, it's how you use the clicker though that's very important and you can get them pretty much anywhere where they um, at pretty much any pet store or if you um, rather buy it online they also sell them online they usually run um, about I think two to three dollars but definitely less than five bucks if you have a bird um, I recommend that you get a clicker but also get a chopstick and either um, glue gun it to your clicker or you can super glue it to your clicker um, your bird should never have access, free access to the clicker, so that's not the point of it. But the reason why I glued this chopstick onto the clicker is because now it works really well as a target stick. So if I'm, for example, training an aggressive bird and I'm trying to teach the bird to step up, what I could do is I can, um, after gluing this on, I can put this near my bird. Uh, birds are naturally curious, so they'll try to investigate and try to touch it with their beak. When they do, I click and a reward. And by doing that, eventually what the clicker does is that the bird is going to associate the sound of the clicker with a treat that's about to be um, delivered. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to put this a little bit higher. Girl. And she knows right then that when she hears that click sound that she did something right and that a reward is about to come. So I can then take this target stick, if I'm training an aggressive bird, and target them from place to place, and then eventually to target them onto my hand. Alright guys, I'm going to show you how to use a clicker, and also the reasoning behind why a clicker works, and why it's so effective by using Smokey as an example. And in this session, I'm going to train Smokey how to put these colored um, balls into each of their respective um, colored containers. The first thing that you got to keep in mind when you're training any animal, whether it's a bird, a cat, or a dog, is you always want to set up the learner for success. So instead of having all three containers out, I'm going to just have one container, in this case the red one, and also have the red ball out. So this is going to um, be much easier to start off with um, training Smokey to do. So by doing that, I'm already setting her, her up for success. And when she does succeed, it kind of encourages her to continue um, doing as we ask her to do. Smokey, can you perch? Good. All right, let me grab my clicker. Smokey, get it. Put it in. Good girl, all right. What a good bird. So Smokey already knows how to fetch and she also knows how to, um, using my cue, put things into a basket. So the only thing I'm trying to do now is trying to get her to associate that the red ball has to go inside the red cup. Smokey, oops, don't do that. Over here. Can you get that? Put it in. Put it in. Good bird. Alright, so the point of the clicker, guys, is that whenever Smokey gets the ball and she puts it in, if I don't click like what I just did, she gets really confused because she has no idea what's going on. Put it in. And whenever um, they do something right and you deliver a treat, there's always that time gap from when the behavior occurs, her putting the ball in, and me actually getting the treat out and delivering it to her. There's always that time gap. So what the tr um, clicker does is that it acts, put it in, as a marker. So whenever I click, guys, she knows exactly that she did something right. She knows why she's being rewarded. And um, at that point, I can take my time getting the treat out because after that, it doesn't matter. Um, she already knows the reason why she's being rewarded. And let's make this a little bit more challenging. Instead of introducing all three, I'm just going to introduce um, one different color, the green one this time. So I'm going to put these right here. And I'm going to put the red ball over there. 
and cue her to put in here. There you go. Now, what you might be thinking right now is instead of clicking, can't I just say whistle or can't you just say good boy? And the answer is yes, of course you can. Get the ball. Put it in. Good girl. You could say good girl and you can use that instead of a clicker. But there are some things for more complica complicated tricks like this. Put it in. Where timing is very important. Um, the clicker is a really good tool. And I want to make sure that she knows exactly when she did something right. So the moment the ball drops in, it's much faster for me to click than to say good girl. And also the clicker, another benefit of using that is that it has a distinct but also a consistent sound every single time. So put it in. So that also helps um, the learner to kind of understand this process a lot faster. Let's make this a little bit more challenging. Let me switch up the green and the red cups and see if she's understanding what's required. Very good. Let's try that again. I don't know, guys, if that was luck or if she actually understood that the red one's supposed to go inside the red container. So we'll try that one more time. Very good, Smokey. There you go. Okay. Now let's add the blue cup and see if she still could get this right. Smokey, get the ball. No, you gotta get the ball. Go get the ball. Get it? Okay, let me flip it over. There. Get the ball. Very good, Smokey. Good girl. Alright guys, now that you understand what a bridge is and how to use it, let's um, go over one common mistake that people make in training. Let me do that by showing you guys an example um, and see if you can identify the mistake that I'm doing. Smokey, wave. Good girl. Can you identify the mistake? Um, even though it seems like I'm using a bridge, that actually was, um, the timing was really off. This is what I mean. A bridge is a marker that identifies what behavior was correct and also it's always followed by a treat reward. So instead of saying wave, the mistake I made was I said good girl and at the same time I was delivering the treat. So if you're always saying good girl, clicking and then delivering the treat right at the same time, the value of the bridge or the clicker is diminished. So instead, what you should do is smoky wave, good girl, bridge it and then reward with the treat. So the treat should always be delivered right after um, the bridge and not simultaneously with the bridge. Smoky wave. Good. Good girl. And then reward. Okay. Now in the initial stages of training you always want to reward correct behaviors. You also want to make sure that you set the animal up for success so that they maximize their chances of succeeding. Um, if the learner does continuously fail and they have too many um, failures early on in training, they're eventually just going to give up and the training session isn't going to go anywhere. So you always want to make sure that for the learner there's always going to be a strong history of reinforcement. Smokey, turn around. Good girl, and then reward. Both Smokey and Snuggles knows that whenever they hear the click sound from the clicker, they're always going to be reward rewarded by um, a with a treat reward. But um, does that mean that you always have to reward with a treat whenever you're training? The answer is no. Alright guys, so um, you've seen me use a bridge and you saw me um, talking about that with Smokey as an example. But I also want to show you that these techniques work not only with birds, but they also work with dogs and with really any animal. So um, I'm going to cue Snuggles to do certain things and like I said before, when she does something right, I'm going to say good. I want you to notice her behavior right when I say good. Um, what you're going to see is she's going to kind of freeze in the moment because she knows that when I say good, that's the target behavior I'm looking for and she did something right. 
And she also knows that the entire behavior and the chain of behaviors does not um, end until I say good girl. So when she hears good girl, she's going to really run to me because she knows that that's when everything is done and that's when the reward is going to come. I also want you to know that I'm not using treats um, at this time to train. She knows because she's been around me for a bit now that I don't have any treats. She doesn't smell anything. But I also want you to see that um, when you um, take your time to train correctly, that you don't need treats to train. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people kind of have a misconception about. Some people think, well, if you're using positive reinforcement, you always have to carry around treats, which is totally untrue. So let's go ahead and um, see this in practice. Snuggles. Sit. Good. Back up. Good. Snuggles. Down. Good. Stand. Good. Back up. Good. Snuggles. Sit. Good. Look. Look. Good. Snuggles. Bark. Good girl. Good girl. What a good girl. Hopefully at this point you guys have a good idea of how to use a bridge um, to take your training to the next level. But I also hope that this kind of give you an idea that and an understanding that when you train an animal it's very systematic. And it's not just a guessing game where we're doing things based on what we've been taught through traditions. Now I also think that it's important at this point to let you guys know that the reason why I create all of these videos is to help people to understand that when you train um, a bird or a dog or any animal for that instance that you don't need to use punishment and you don't have to use aversives or fear to try to get them to stop doing certain things and my philosophy has always been that instead of focusing on the bad instead of focusing on teaching your dog not to do this or teaching your bird to stop um, a problem behavior why don't we instead identify what behaviors we do want our birds and our dogs to do and then um, set up a systematic program of training to get them to where we want them and teach them essentially what we want them to do instead. Now all of these tricks that I teach Smokey, they might look cool and all guys, but the reason why we really train, the reason why I train is because I want to enrich her life. And training offers us a method to do that. Because as you guys saw, in training, what we're essentially doing is we are creating a two-way communication pathway between us and also the animal so that they can understand our intentions, but we can also better communicate with them at the same time. Like I said before, um, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be coming out with a uh, series of videos on flight training. So I think that before we even begin that, I want you guys to start using the bridge with your own bird to teach them to um, just basic recall and target training. Because that really is imperative to everything else that we do uh, with flight training. If you guys enjoy seeing Smokey, you can also um, see more of her on Instagram. And I'll put a link to that in the description box right down below. But at this point, I would also like to ask you guys for a huge favor. Before this video ends, make sure you guys enjoyed this video. If it's helpful to you, uh, make sure you guys also click that like button below and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. It only takes a split second, but it helps me out a lot. Um, so make sure you do that. And if you guys are part of other bird forums, um, you're welcome to also share this video as long as you directly link it from a YouTube channel. Alright, that is it. And I will see you guys all next week. But before we end the video, just one last thing. Smokey, bye! bye.